So, brother, witchcraft. Talk to me about it. Everybody, you know, when you say witchcraft, people tend to imagine the witch with the ward and all the magical stuff. But, you know, we want to get into it in biblical terms. So talk to me. What is it in biblical terms? I think that in, uh, well, in biblical terms, it, it can mean a multitude of different things, depending on the context of, you know, what we're reading. But um, I think that the for the subject of our topic today when we're talking about witchcraft and the demonic and the spiritual warfare side of the reality that we live in um and i think that's that's what when i think about witchcraft it's not so much uh you know the floating people or the voodoo dolls and now that's real and we'll obviously i'm sure we'll talk about that um but you know there's also a spiritual warfare that is constant that is not the lady in the back of the bathroom you know pinning a doll up you know somebody that that now that is that's real right but that's that's not the constant like there is a constant spiritual battle which if you think about witchcraft and you think about the stuff that's going on in, in our world the, the the elements that we have the access we have like witchcraft can is is really just anything that can be used in purposes to forward the kingdom of the enemy um, right. especially that causes confusion or that causes something to doubt in the mind or causes uh you know uh just so, you know, when you see something outside the norm, outside the elements um, of what you're used to, it begins to doubt God or begins to doubt if he's real or, you know, what are we seeing? What are we doing? So when I think of rich, witchcraft, I really think of, you know, the spiritual side effect of things that we're in on the daily. Yeah, because I've been seeing a lot of it lately, brother, like McDonald's on May 10th was mm -hmm. giving away free tarot card readings. Have you heard of that? With, no. uh, yeah. with a McChicken sandwich, it was something to do with the yeah. Mercury retrograde. Yeah, that's so crazy. And that's yeah. divination right there. So that just stood yeah, out to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Like, See, wait we, a minute. But we live in a generation where tarot card reading is interesting to them. You know what I'm saying? Like where this, uh, which it, and I think it's been, it's been back and forth. I know that there's generations that's come before mine that were that way I, like my mom talks about playing with uh you know a Ouija board as a child like things mm -hmm. like that and and uh being intrigued in that you know growing up in the in the 70s and stuff about those things with this with the 60s and 70s you know coming into this the realm of spirituality if you will um but now we're kind of in a new era where this open theism openness to anything um, astral projection where, metaphysics doesn't it doesn't really matter none of it's evil there's no such thing as evil so even like tarot card reading like you know as innocent it may sound has demonic ties has witchcraft in its background that's what that is that is a, a form of witchcraft and that is a way that the enemy can deceive and 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 deceive other or deceive people and right now we live in a generation where it would not shock me that people lined up at mcdonald's to do that you know because they're open to to anything literally anything i could probably put a sign out my door saying you know free palm reading and I, I guarantee you i would get somebody that wants to know and you know what that shows is they're searching for something still there's yeah. still a there's still a hope that they're missing they're still looking for that that fulfillment yeah the fulfillment yeah well that's scary you know. though yeah, it is. It is. It's it's crazy. You know, you see it, especially there in Miami, Santeria runs rapid, you know. Yes. And with Santeria, they like to channel and talk to the dead, which you know that ain't possible. You know what you're mm -hmm. really talking to. So you know what you're talking. Yeah, there's there's something else you're talking to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah. a lot of people don't really see it that way. And it and the problem is, you know. Like you mentioned, uh, the Ouija board, the Alja, is it Alja, Ouija, whatever. Ouija, I don't know, I just always call it a Ouija board. 
Yeah. You know, growing up, I heard tons of stories of people messing with it and it doing strange things. I was never tempted. I, you know, I come from a Christian background. So my mom was always like, you stay away from that type of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bet. But you know, you look at it and it's been normalized quite a bit. And witchcraft is something that God holds. He hates it basically, Mm -hmm. you know, and, you see people dabbling in it and not knowing what they're doing. You know, there's different types, you, you know, there's voodoo too. And I've seen lately, even on TikTok, like uh, there was one gentleman that was talking about uh, witchcraft and everything else. And he brought up the blood in the spaghetti thing where supposedly if you make uh, women do this, supposedly, mm-hmm. I guess that are into it they make a spaghetti and in the sauce they mix period blood and when they feed it to the man he's supposed to be infatuated with her what culture is this i think that relates to voodoo oh my lord no yeah i could could see that i mean yeah that would but in it because that in voodoo there's so much blood sacrifice involved there's so much blood involved in voodoo um in the elements of that, that that would make perfect sense. I personally have never heard of that, um, not to my knowledge. And I've seen a lot of voodoo in Haiti, but I I would not be shocked. I mean, because there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of different ways that people participate in that. And blood sacrifice is a huge part of, uh, of what voodoo is. Yeah, yeah. I know that they sacrifice a lot, even with uh, Santeria, which is, pretty yes. highly uh has a big movement in miami there's a lot of you know people from the islands that have come with santeria where they mix yep. catholicism with these uh i guess african culture gods yeah or- and it's animal sacrifices they'll chop chickens heads off or you know chop the head of an animal off or a goat or something like um, for cleansings and stuff yeah. like that like i hear it i've heard it a lot you know originally i'm from oh, drink the blood uh, all, all types of stuff i mean it's uh you know we actually had a, a mission team in town recently from georgia and they weren't familiar with these types of things and uh we were going around doing door-to-door door hangers for our church inviting people and one of the teams came back and they were like man yeah and we saw like a dead chicken in a uh in the driveway with his head chopped off of this one place and they were like oh that was kind of weird and i was like yeah that's called uh santeria they're doing they were obviously practicing something last night or doing some kind of they're like what and i'm like yeah it's it's real like it's real and i I think that's the one of the biggest things that i've realized in our just in the world that people don't believe it's real like they really don't think it's real they don't believe it's real they don't you know it's it's one thing that like it's almost like all spirits are good um, there's no mm-hmm. such thing as a bad spirit anymore. Um, so it's just, everything is, uh, is, is open. Everything is open for, for whatever it is that they want to do. And when it comes to these, uh, and in reality, like people don't, because they don't believe it's real, they don't really have a knowledge of it. So they don't really care about it. So like even Christians, you know, that have grown up in Christian schools don't even recognize signs of witchcraft of voodoo of devil worship like they just look at it as oh there's a dead chicken here like no like that should to a christian i feel like we should that should stop us and 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 kind of look around look look for items of interest maybe maybe uh idols that look like they're uh in the form of some god or, or some type of thing and and recognize your surroundings and recognize what's around us because i think that there is such a lack of of knowledge care, not knowledge and it's it's, it's a lack of knowledge and it's people don't care really you know they don't see it as a threat as an imminent threat when in reality that is our threat a huge threat yeah it can lead to so many different things you know yeah and is that something that christians should worry about like somebody doing voodoo i know that i know i pretty much know the answer but i want to discuss it you know let's say somebody's doing voodoo on person that's a believer Mm -hmm. does that affect them so this has always been my understanding and just personal experience and at the end of the day a christian cannot be demonically possessed 
um, that's impossible. If, if you have Christ inside of you, a demon also cannot dwell in the same house. It, Jesus himself says that, that there cannot be darkness and light can't be together. Uh, that, um, sorry, my phone's ringing and distracting me. I'm trying to think of who's uh, uh, the the verse where he says, uh, you know, a house divided among itself cannot uh, stand. So it, it, in, in the same process, you know, if you're a Christian, you're a born again believer, you do not have to worry about demonic possession, a demon coming inside of you and, and, and tormenting you in those ways or things like that. Now, do I believe that there are uh, demonic oppressions? Absolutely. Do I think that spells could be cast on you? Absolutely. Do I think that you can be affected by certain things? Absolutely. I think that if you're not prepared in your spiritual walk, if you're not at a place of preparation and you're not ready for these attacks, it's like any spiritual attack. It's just like if I were to have, you know, if, if the devil himself chose to, uh, you know, attack me, just like the lady practicing voodoo down the street, it, I can be affected by either one, depending on my faith in that time, depending on my walk with the Lord in that time, depending on, you know, how strong in the faith I am in that time depends on how, I guess, uh, you know, in a way, my reaction to what's taking place, but also how much of effect it really has on you. Because if you think about putting on the armor of God every single day, and you and you put on these the the, the armor of God, you put on the helmet uh, of truth, and or you have the sword of truth, you have the the, the sword of uh, or the breastplate of righteousness. You have all these things that are covering you every single day. But there are moments that you and I know that we step outside, or we take garments off, or we 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 don't quite put on the full armor. Right. Then absolutely, if if someone were to be casting a spell on you, then yeah, sure, it could it could affect you. Now, let me say this: Do I think that it has the power to overtake you? No, that's the difference, and I think that's the biggest thing: is that we have Christ fighting for us. We have. God fighting for us in the spiritual realm. So yeah, what meant to kill you? Might you get sick? Sure. But do I think that you should be afraid of some lady or guy down the road that are just casting spells on you or somebody, something like that? Like, no, that's not like as a believer in Christ, like we have Christ fighting those battles for us. We have things. Now, once again, are there moments that were affected? Absolutely. I'll share a story. We were in Africa when I was about 21 years old um, and our entire group had uh, had been there for a few weeks and uh all this we had met the witch doctor of the community and all this stuff we're in a little unreached people group i mean it was a small village this was 10 years ago <laughs> and uh we backpacked in no water no electricity uh stayed in tents it was you know very rural and um you know, these, some of these people have never seen white people before. Like they were trying to wipe yeah. my skin off. Like, you know, it, it was crazy. Well, people started coming to Jesus. We started doing these nighttime things. We would, we would turn on a lamp at night and in a village where there's no power. Um, and you had a generator running all of a sudden, like if one, one light, you would attract just thousands of people. So people would come from all over this village at night and they would stand around and we'd share the gospel with them. Well, over time, this witch doctor got upset about it. And, uh, while we were there, they cast a spell, which we come to find out later, they cast a spell that, uh, I don't know if it was that we would like get so sick that we would leave or that we would die or something, but the witch doctor had cast a spell on our team and what ended up happening, and this is real, this is actually recorded on somebody's phone. I, I want to say it's on really? Facebook. I'd have to see if I have to find it. But, but the guy's like recording over us. He had just shown up and he was the project navigator. And we're all just passed out, like just sleeping. And that's all we're, we're doing. We're, we're just like knocked out sleeping. But he's like walking over. He's like, My man, I've never seen the team sleep so hard. Like, what are they doing? Like, they're just out like what you know well none of us remember going to sleep none of us remember any of that part all we remember is waking up and we saw the video and we're all like what like we were passed out well come to find out you know a couple like it was like a day or two later because we were just all just like i mean but honestly it was an amazing nap like and so that's almost like <laughs> god turning it around you know what i'm saying like we don't did, worry i got it sleep <laughs> but we did find out that in reality that that is real the the witch doctor had cast a spell on our team to and and in our belief is that it, it simply just put us to sleep whatever it meant to do um if it was meant to kill us or harm us because people were coming to christ all it did was, was put it to sleep so 
to go back to your question, should we be fearful? Absolutely not. We should never fear. Should we be vigilant? Absolutely. Should we watch out and 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 keep? You know, I mean, I, I think vigilant is a, is probably the best word I can use. Yeah. You know, should we be aware of what's going on? You know, absolutely. But at the end of the day, we don't have to worry about uh, paranormal activity coming into our lives if we're, you know, born, bought again believers. Uh, now, be careful who you hang out with because they can bring oppressions into your life. They can bring spiritual warfare into your life that maybe you weren't normally around. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so people can also uh, bring energies. And I don't want to, and, and I hate that the church can't use the word energy because it sounds so spiritualized now, mm. but at the end of the day, I mean, there are energies that people carry. There are auras that people have. And that's why a Christian can recognize Christian. We always say like real recognize real, like there are things that you can recognize about people. There's a spirit of God that when I'm around people that have the spirit of God, man, sometimes you just something about you. There's something about you, right? Like there yeah. are energies that we can it draws you and it draws you yeah and there are and there are spiritual forces around us that are in forms of energies that surround us that move within us that go through us and if we're in christ that's good that's the good of us that's the positive that's the stuff that has made us new in him but in the same way people carry around baggage and, and carry around uh, if they allow the spiritual into their lives, it could be bad aura. It could be bad energy. It could be, and we don't know what demonic. And, 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 and I think everybody's gone through that too. Like where you've yeah. looked at somebody and been like, don't know them. Don't, I don't know. Don't kind of want to get to know. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to touch upon a little of everything just so people are aware because yes, you're covered in, in the armor of the Lord as a believer. But it also, you also cannot give up a foothold. You get me? And that's where these unclean spirits come and try to oppress and cause more chaos, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was bringing up like the different types, like um, there's sorcery, you know, that's with amulets and drugs and incantations. There's voodoo, there's channeling, you know, that that was big, I think in the 50s, 40s. Mm -hmm. where physics fortune tellers mediums you know metaphysics is one that actually i even thought about when i was uh, younger in high school i was like oh the study of the mind god gave us such a great mind and how that draws you in mm -hmm. because you're thinking it's just about the mind and that leads to astral projection yeah then of course is idolatry you know that but go ahead. Tell me. Tell me what you were stating earlier. So you're you know, talking about mental energy. Yeah, you were talking about mental manipulation, and I was, and I'm thinking about the idea of uh, the power that we do carry as human beings, um, mm -hmm. because there is a spiritual element to all of us that is either dead or awakened in Christ, right? And right. because ours is um, awakened, we have now the power to do good because of Christ, right? But at the end of the day, there is a mental manipulation that can take place because of the spiritual power that we have to place over people's lives. Because of this, if, if we're tapped into certain spiritual realms, we can manipulate people's minds. We can uh, manipulate their emotions to the point that you can have them believing literally anything that you want if they're that open and accepting to uh, your, I guess, the, the spiritual nature that you're carrying with you. And, and that's the difference. And when you go into all these different things, there's different spiritual natures. We have one of Christ and then mm -hmm. everything else and then whatever else they want to call it, whatever it is, you have one of Christ and then everything else. So every spiritual nature, somebody may be into, like you were saying, they may be into voodoo. They're, what they're carrying with them is going to look different than the person that is into astrology. You know, they're going to look a lot different than the person that is the voodoo person. And so, and what they're, the, the energies they're carrying with them, the things that they're carrying with them, the baggage that they're holding, their, their uh, mental, what I would even go as far as to say is their mental manipulation capability is even limited by which avenue of witchcraft they choose. 
Because yeah. I think at the end of the day, mental manipulation is the big idea. That is the big truth is to what what is the the Bible talks about renewing of the mind mind. every single day. Do not be conformed to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that is our our goal is, is for our mind. So mental manipulation at the end of the day, if you look at the whole category of any witchcraft, it really all falls under mental manipulation. It falls under somebody claiming to have spiritual power that you don't that can lead you further into whatever realm you want and that's also an issue in christianity because it can be abused yeah like yeah can abuse that you know i've heard of that. that we don't want to miss that that you know pastors also can mentally manipulate and they can abuse their good power um and and use it for ill will but at the end of the day mental manipulation when you think about that as a whole, I mean, every one of these things that we, you, we've we listed falls under channeling, uh, santeria, voodoo, sorcery, magic, all of it is, an, is an, under the umbrella of trying to manipulate your mind into not believing what is true is actually true. Yeah. Right. I mean, even when we grew up, I don't know about you, but I grew up like wanting magic kits, like all the time. Like uh, I had all the sorcerer's like, road. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right, like I, I wanted to be able to like pull the, I had that little thing that you could pull all the colors, you know, and like I never got any good. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I, I learned a few card tricks. And so, like, I still know some card tricks that will, that make people's minds just like, how did you do that? Now, at the end of the day, I know exactly what I did. I know the manipulation that I've used. I know, you know, the secret behind the trick, but just to get your mind in a place to where now you're open, right? You're open to the possibility. Did he really do something that I can't do? Yeah. Yeah. Like once that opens up, once that part of your life opens, once that spiritual element is open, People can do so many things. Magicians can do so many things. Sorcerers can do so many things. All they have to do is open your eyes to the possibilities that this is true. And once that mental, like you you said, mental manipulation, once that is twisted and it's been put in place, it's done. Things are open. Then mm-hmm. that's when you're seeking like, man, I want to be able to do what they they do or i want what they have i want the power they have i want the you know whatever it may be that they have yeah well mental manipulation you know it's it, you see it in every form see it in the media you I, you know yeah, i worked you, for go- i worked for government dealing with vendors you try to twist their arm mentally you know so you can get the product at a lower cost or add it on for no cost you know, you see it and, and it's a big one. You know, there's a lot of gaslighting. There's a lot of mind games that people play one, even in relationships, you know, mm-hmm. and it's all a part of mental manipulation. You know, it provides guilt, provide, mm-hmm. you know, it includes lying, which is a commandment in itself. Thou shalt not lie. You know, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's very true. You, you know, know, and manipulation was it? the was the first sin with Eve. She obviously had to get Adam to, to follow suit. No, and the snake used it on her too. Yeah. Yeah. To manipulate her into tr- trusting him. Yeah. I mean, it, and, and doubting God at the end of the day, once again, mm-hmm. doubting that God is who he says. Yeah, he getting you to that point word. where you question and you sit back and you go, huh, huh. did he really say? Yeah. Did he, did really? he really mean this or did he mean yeah. Yeah. And one of the things when I preached, I love preaching Genesis chapter three, verses one through 11. Like that's my favorite. I don't know why I like, and even just the end of, of chapter two um, into chapter three, those are some of my favorite passages to preach. And you see one minute at the end of chapter two, it says they were naked and, and, and they felt no shame. And then in the beginning of chapter three, it says now the serpent and it goes from they were with God and felt no sh- naked and felt no shame to where all of a sudden they're with a serpent. And it's, you go from the presence of God to the presence of your enemy so quickly. And sometimes you don't even recognize 
you know, where, what presence you're in. Um, if you're not vigilant, if you're not paying attention, if you're not looking. And, and so once again, you he found herself in this place, right? And going back to doubting what God said, did he really say that you would die? Now, I love to, in my head, I just think about this because there's no other place in scripture that we see animals being able to talk unless gifted that through God, like Balaam's or uh, the donkey or whatever in, in different areas throughout. But there's never been a place that we understood for animals that were created to have language. Right. That, that communicated with humans. And I know that people that like to stretch theories out there and stuff, they use this part to say animals used to could talk before the fall of man. And, and now, uh, because the fall of man, they can't talk. And I'm, that's, I don't believe that. I don't believe that, that animals were created with the same language nature as, as human beings. So in this moment, this is a magical, if you will, this is a sorcery uh, mental manipulation, because all of a sudden, an animal that Adam and Eve both knew very well, because they named Adam named every animal. So he named the serpent, the serpent, he knew about the serpent. But now this serpent might not only be touching the tree, but he might be going around through it. And he's talking. Hmm. Yeah, like, what? That's a good visual. Like, so don't, so when we, when we blame Eve, we're like, man, how did you fall for this? I mean, are you kidding me? Like a talking serpent in the tree that I'm not supposed to touch? Like, maybe he does know something that I don't know, right? Like, maybe, yeah. just maybe God is withholding, right? And, and, and all that does is just that little boom, like maybe, just maybe that is enough. And, and in reality, that's not God withholding. That's that, that's the temptation of, of the forbidden fruit of the, the, whatever it may be. But that's all the devil took was just that opening of the mind, just saying, but maybe, maybe. Did God really, but did God really? And look what I'm like, look the voice that, that I'm using. I'm in the tree. Did God really say you can't eat or even touch it or you will die? Or like, did, God say you would eat it? did you, or you would die? And then she says, yeah, we're not even supposed to touch it. And he's like, really? Like, could you imagine that moment? And I mean, thinking about the, the manipulation of the, 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 the poof moment of, man, this God might have kept me away from this tree and this serpent might've figured out something that we don't know about. Mm-hmm. So we might want to follow him. And, and I think, first. and that's our, and that's our downfall, curiosity. You know, a lot of people uh, ask, like that's you good. said, in, the, in their mind, they just, dook, and it hits that maybe, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's not mm -hmm. this, maybe it's not that. And then when you're knee deep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, and usually the one that's tempting is already doing it, you know, same thing with witchcraft. I, I don't think people walk around in Santeria or anything else. I never saw them walk around and say, Hey, do you want to do something? Oh, no. no. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to come to church with me? Cause they say church too. And the moment there was one time I was invited once and it was a church somewhere in little Havana. And I was like, eh, why not? I'll, I'll go to church, you know, and the moment I walked in, I felt it. And I looked around and you see all these saints and you, and I looked at the, you know, I, below each saint, they put like fruit, money, you know, it's part of Santeria, their offerings. Yeah. And the moment I looked and I looked around, I was like, oh no, I'm gone. <laughs> My friend didn't even know that I was gone. I was already in the car. Gone. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's brother. funny. This this is the first place don't that play I've around been with that. that well, this is the first place that I've been, you know, starting a church and people actually ask me, is it a Christian church? And I'm like, yeah, like what other kind of church do you have? And you know, when I first moved here uh three years ago, it was that was my thought was like, what do you like what what uh, yeah, what what other type are you thinking? Like Catholic? Like we're not Catholic. Do I look Catholic? Like, you know, but what they're asking is like, what are you? Because there's so many things here in Miami, especially here in South Florida, that is 
you know, that you, you just don't know what you're getting into. Like you said, you might go, they call it church, just like you call it church, right? Yeah. You, might end up, you might end up in a voodoo ritual somewhere. So uh, you have to be careful because at the end of the day, this is- And the, that's part of the lie too. They blend it. That way, and, and this is the fearful part is there is an experience that could still be had. And because of that experience, it could still, once again- open you up to that idea of maybe this is the right way but it's just like one thing that i found with any person that's dealt with voodoo and and we've seen testimony of of people that have been and i specifically say voodoo because just of where i've been in in haiti and africa um have been very very big in in voodoo witchcraft and uh santeri i see a lot more here um because that's mixed in with the uh hispanic culture and then uh the african culture as well they're kind of mixed voodoo and and other things to catholicism really so um but you see sorcery and, and things like that and and involved with voodoo um it's it kind of intertwines within itself with different medications and different uh chants and seances and things like that but i've seen people break free Um, i've seen people come to christ i watched a a voodoo priest's wife come to know the lord uh when i was in heaven and then the voodoo priest uh threatened to kill one of the americans uh that night and the next day um he came to know the lord and it was incredible because he we were walking through the village we baptized this man um and he was walking through the village and and we're walking beside him and it reminded me of jesus carrying the cross with everybody like insulting him because people were lined up in the village to watch what was taking place because he was taking he had a bag of all of his voodoo uh stuff like his can of aerosol sprays his medications his things that he was uh uh blending and just all of his dolls just everything and he was going out to the ocean and he was throwing them in the ocean and as he's walking these people are just screaming things at him laughing at him saying things so i asked one of the translators i'm like what is he what are they saying and they're just like oh you know we'll we'll hold your stuff and when you decide that jesus isn't as strong as you know our god then we'll sell it back to you and you know whenever you're ready to come back we're here voodoo's here like all this stuff and like so this man you know we watch this man walk into the ocean and he throws all of this stuff you know out into the sea and hundreds of kids are jumping in the ocean and, and it, it, terrible tide, terrible waves, jumping in after wooden idols, wooden pieces that they think are going to bring them some type of joy. But at the end of the day, when this man who is now a believer, he's baptized in the faith, he's never felt joy like he has with Christ. So even in those moments, this is what people need to understand. Voodoo can bring an experience that can feel good. It doesn't have to feel this 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 crazy, ba- but it's going to leave you just as empty as you were or before. More. It's going it, to or more, and you're going to have to go back and back and back. It's like a drug, voodoo, sorcery, magic, all of it. Uh, meta, the, the 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 cards, the Ouija boards, all those things. It's like drugs. You're going to have to keep going back and back and back and back. Versus where Jesus says, "If you knew of the water that I had, you would never thirst again." Amen. And that's the biggest difference between between this world. I'm watching this man in Haiti go and throw everything, and he's walking out of bondage while you're watching hundreds of young people walk right into it. And yet he is, would tell you, as a voodoo priest, has never felt fulfillment like he has in Christ because all of these other things are going to have people continuing to have to go back, sacrifice more, give up more, do more. And then, and like slaving. you said, yeah, and like, and what we we're talking about earlier, people don't just walk around like saying, "Hey, I, I, I talk to demons," <laughs> like you know, like it's that not happen. advertised. You know, it's not but advertised. When you get involved, and all of a sudden you start having those voices in your your head, you start seeing things appear. You start having. That's the other thing that I I try to tell people is they're like, I don't understand why people believe in voodoo and stuff. And I'm like, because they've seen people float. Mm-hmm. like they have seen it like it's not like to them it's not this is not a magic trick like this is that's the the americanized culture to get that out of your head like these people in these 
sub, you know, these tribes in Africa that, that are, uh, or India or Asia that have, have never really heard the gospel and, and, and they're deep rooted, you know, in this voodoo culture and, and the demonic is strong there. They have witnessed things happen. They've actually, I've seen videos. I've seen videos on TikTok, an African guy floating up about eight feet off the off the floor and i'm like oh wow no 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 not my kind of party and there was they were surrounded you know i mean go ahead and and going back to miami you know i i've never been afraid of witchcraft i don't give it any thought i don't my my thoughts are with the lord like i had a friend of mine once that was cutting his lawn and going back to the chicken thing it was a chicken beheaded in a bag in his yard and he was afraid to pick it up i picked it up and i put it in the trash and the first thing he told me was you're not afraid that that's stuck on you this this i said no yeah i said listen brother when you got the lord my job is not to be afraid of that but to stand up and if you can't take it out of your home then i'll do it that's that i I picked it up and i threw it right in the trash and i didn't even give it a second thought yeah. And, I and that was years ago. And I'm still standing. Yeah. I no effect. I think that, you know, sometimes Christians are, you know, it's what you allow a- as well. Like you were saying, yeah. it's what you allow as well. But, you know, believe it or not, nowadays, I don't know, brother. Listen, you are a special commodity. A lot of pastors, you bring up the term witchcraft. They'll tell you the basics of it, and that's it. And they don't speak upon it anymore, if they even acknowledge it at times. Because growing up as a Christian, I've asked many times, like, what? You know, it, as, a, as a younger adult, I've asked. I was always curious, what, you know, what is considered witchcraft? Mm-hmm. And now as an adult, as a man more involved in the Lord and learning more, I've seen a lot more. And it's not just that simple. It's not the guy with, you know, with the, with the cape and mm-hmm. throwing sparkles in the air and all that yeah. stuff. It's a spiritual realm, like you're saying. And you got to be careful of where you step, because when you open those, those openings in the mind, mm-hmm. and you sit there and you say, maybe, and you participate, it can lead to something else. Because once you leave the grace of God, what happens? Because the way I see it is, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's only two choices. You're either with him or you're not. Mm -hmm. And if you're with him, you're covered. I don't believe a Christian can be demon-possessed. I can, I do believe you can have very uh, different types of attack, oppressive. Absolutely. I've had that. I had that last week. I've fallen Mm -hmm. ill for one day. And the funny thing is, like you were telling me, you weren't feeling well. You were down for three days with 103 fever. That happened to me about two, maybe three months ago when I first opted to do this show. And the funny thing was, I made the choice. I prayed about it the following day. Physically, couldn't do it. Achy knees and exhaustion. I couldn't, I couldn't even stay awake long enough to finish my prayers. When did it end for me? When I finally took the initiative and got on my knees and forced myself to pray. Mm. A couple hours later, I was fine, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But see, that's the rea- that's that's the realness, though, of of the reality of that there is a spiritual realm that doesn't want. Um, and I and I'm not one of these people to attribute everything to the devil. I'm not somebody that's like, oh, the no, there's the flesh you, too. There, there's us. Yeah, too. absolutely. There's us. There's always us. Uh, but there is a reality of even as small as you know us having issues recording. You know, we've tried three times to have this conversation. You know, and and I, I do seriously. I, I believe that um, maybe not every time. Uh, maybe I just got sick, or maybe it's something. You know, whatever. But 
I definitely believe that there were times that the devil wanted this conversation not to happen. I definitely believe that. And there were uh, are forces, there are spiritual things at play that don't want it to happen. And, and not just because it has nothing to do with me and you. It has everything to do with us talking against the devil and for God right. and saying that the devil has lost, that his, it doesn't matter which form he wants to come in. He has no victory over us, but he still tries to inflict fear through different avenues in our life. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that happened to me personally, I was in Haiti um, and you got to be careful what, what you pray for as well uh, as a Christian, because God will give you, God will let you have it, you know? And, um, you know, I was going to Haiti and this is uh, um, several years ago. And just the people I was taking with me, I really wanted to protect. And uh, it was their first time on, on a trip. And I knew Haiti was, had been dangerous in the past. Uh, it'd been, it's one of my last times being in Haiti. Um, and no, I'll take that back. This was actually when we first kind of got into Haiti. This is one of the first few times I'd been there. And so it was, uh, it was a rough trip. And people I was bringing anyway, I, I had just been praying the week before uh, in, in the States. I was just like, God, you know, I pray they have an amazing trip. I pray this changes them. This does all these things. You know, I wanted this to be like a, a jolt in in their body of of the reality of the world and, you know, things like that. Because I've, I've seen it. I've been in tents in other countries, you know, for months without electricity and, and ministering and doing things and seeing the world. And I wanted them to have that experience. That's why what we call our church Village Church, because of the experiences I've had out of villages in different parts of the world. And, and so I've, I've seen these things. So I'm praying to God that, you know, they just have all these time. And then eventually I find myself about the last two days, I'm outside and I'm just praying, God, whatever it is, just put it on me. God, put it on me put it on mm. me, just whatever it is, put it on me, put it on me, put it on me. And like that suffering servant thinking like, because I'm saying this, God's not going to do it. He's going to be like, <laughs> Oh, look at him. You know, Hold on. Like, a, yeah, a nice little test. <laughs> yeah. But God knows your heart. Right. So like yes, he God does. knows the, the falseness of that. Like, Oh, put it on me, God, AKA let nothing bad happen. Come on. <laughs> right. Like, um, and so real life, I had never fasted until this moment, um, I'm in Haiti. This is about day three. And we had had a lot of spiritual opposition. We had a lot of things happening and I'm sleeping in a hammock. Um, I had by this point traveled enough with this organization that I knew uh, tents were too hot for me. If there were trees nearby, I was going to hammock for while I was there. So I had a hammock. I'm, I'm in, in my, my hammock sleeping one night and out of nowhere, I, I wake up and I can't breathe, and I have what I feel like is a sword going through the right side of my Ooh. side all the way through the left side um, out up below my ribs, and I am sitting, and, and I all of a sudden, I can't breathe. I'm hunched over, and I am just like trying my best grasping for air. This went on for about 30 minutes, and, I, and there's a guy in a tent that the leader, um, and he's a good friend of mine, and he's in this tent right below me, and I kept trying to say his name and his name's David. And I kept trying to say his name and just to like get somebody. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew this was, I was terrified. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't even want to say that I knew it was spiritual in the moment because I didn't at the very beginning, I just knew I was in so much pain and it felt like somebody had stabbed me. And I didn't know if I had really been stabbed, if somebody, cause we were in an open environment it was not like we you know somebody could have been coming through camp chopping heads I don't know um that and and so I didn't know what was really but it just kept going and it kept going and I kept trying to say his name couldn't say his name and all of a sudden like it just hit me in my head everything just came rushing in prayers everything and I just re I realized this is much more than than what some you're feeling bodily, physically. Yeah, some sort of bodily, somebody, something is attacking me. And all I could say, and I shared this publicly, I've preached on this, all I could say was Jesus. And I just kept saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it went from me mumbling because I, it's so much pain. I just been like, Jesus, 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 mm -hmm. to, to finally 
I, I began to release. And when I, and when I finally started saying the name of Jesus, when I tell you, I could feel it. I felt what I felt like a sword coming completely out of my side. And all of a sudden it was like a breath of everything just came over and I was like, Oh my God. And I realized what happened the entire next day, the whole team knew I was despondent. I was just out of it. I didn't know. I, I stayed awake the rest of the night. I didn't go back to sleep. I was uh, in prayer. I, I fasted the whole, you don't fast when you're in Haiti, but I yes. fasted the whole morning. I fasted the whole, like, you know, you're already starving. So it's not smart. We, we tell people like, don't fast on mission trips because you're already dying. Like, um, you know, but I just started, I didn't know what else to do. And I just fasted. Yeah. And, and, and finally it took about a day and a half or so. I finally opened up uh, to the leader and I, and I told him what happened. And then I shared with the group and there were other people that had had demonic experiences and encounters or whatever um but i had shared the fact of the matter that i had prayed for this mm -hmm. and that's something that you that we can't miss it wasn't like the devil just said hey let me pick on john michael let me do this no this was john michael uh, uh asking for asking for a fight assuming that he is ready and he was not um, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, none of us are without Jesus. And, and that's the thing is Jesus has to be the leader of that. But it, I don't say that I prayed that prayer out of, uh, or that I saved anybody, any demonic. I don't, I don't know that. I don't believe that. I don't know. Um, but I do know what happened to me that night. And I do know how real that moment was. So to tell me that I cannot be affected by the spiritual, I, I'll tell you, you must never have encountered the spiritual well, because you, you I have an experience. That's what I said. So, Cause you can definitely, you can definitely be encountered and, and touched by negative spirits, even as a Christian mm -hmm. and influenced and things like that. And that's why I think that the power of Jesus that we have to understand in the spiritual realm, that there is a power that, that we mm -hmm. that we can have. And, and our power may not look like what voodoo looks like. And that's the other thing too, that I, I just want to say briefly is that God doesn't need to send a man to float. No. Right. Like that, that's the thing that, that we, God doesn't, he sent his son to die for us. And there is evidence by an empty tomb, an empty grave. Nobody can find the body. There is backed up evidence of apostles and people seeing this, this resurrected Jesus. This is in, this was not, and this was also thousands of years in the making of a story Amen. lined up, like, and it happened. And so like to, we don't need a floating dude. No, Like we got a resurrected dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the, so that's the confusion that we want to see in Christianity. We're asking to see the devil's work. Right. God, let me see this crazy. Oh, what? You want to see a man float? Why? Like, what is that going to prove? Even going back to Thomas. See Downey, a man float man. Or, or, or walk into your kitchen in the middle of the night and see a demon. Yeah. Like, why would you, I mean, why do you want God show me these spirits? I like, no, see that. <laughs> no, yeah, you don't. And that's the thing. And like you said, what we'll, we'll, we'll share with us your, your encounter, because well, that's the thing. You don't want that. No. When I was 12 with the hormones and everything else and misunderstandings, I didn't really get along too much with my dad. And that is a totally different story. You know, he was very old school. I didn't, you know, a kid, you don't understand. You just think he's stern on you. But anyways, around the age of 12, I started having what I thought were dreams, but they weren't. I was wide awake in the middle of the night. It's sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. I couldn't move my arms. I could barely move my head. My voice would never come out. And I would see this cloak. Mm. And I couldn't see the face because it had a hood that would come down to like right about here. But whatever it was here had like a bluish skin. First time I saw it, it was standing in the doorway. And I freaked out immediately. I had that sense. This is not right. Something's not right. This is. And I started freaking out and I saw it and it was twirling slowly coming around. It lasted about. It felt like forever, but I, I want to say 20 to 30 seconds, it disappears. The next night, mind you, this happened for two weeks. 
The next night, the cloak was closer and it was doing the same thing, spinning around slowly, coming around. And I'm freaking out, I can't move. Uh, I, I don't even think I had movement of my fingers. It was like total paralysis. I was yelling, but no sound was coming out. And I know because every time it would disappear, my throat would be harsh and hurting. Like if I was just screaming for 30 seconds with everything I had. The following night, the third night, I feel something next to my bed. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm already frightened at this point. I'm 12 years old. I had the covers over my eyes. I'm like, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. But I felt like something, like the tip of your butt when you put it on the bed and it sinks a little bit. I said, mm -hmm. oh my God. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, oh man, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. And at the end, I peeked up my head a little bit out of the blanket and I saw, and whatever it was in the cloak, was sitting on my bed and had a hand out and I could barely make out the hand. It had like a blue flesh and, and like shadowy. And it was trying to touch my leg and I'm freaking out and I'm trying to move and nothing. Well, this kept occurring the same thing. Then it would start all over again, the doorway, middle of the room, bed. This happened for two weeks. My mother took me to a psychologist. That's how bad it was. It got to a point where I didn't want to sleep. I was scared to sleep alone. You know, my mom said, well, let's go find out. Took me to a psychologist. Psychologist was like, no, he's perfect. Well, he might be going through his night terrors, yada, 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 this, 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 that. So they bring me back. It continues going on for like about another week. At that time, my grandma pretty much the whole family knows. So my grandma reaches out, talks to a pastor. Pastor tells her, draw a cross with chalk where he sees this entity. Do it on his headboard and sprinkle holy water throughout the room. And tell your grandson to not be afraid and to pray the next time he sees it. And if he prays, it won't come back. So needless to say, my grandma came, put the cross on my doorway. I think she wrote one on the floor. You know, she sprinkled holy water. She did one in back of my headboard so I wouldn't rub on it and like fade it. And she told me, don't be afraid, pray. Don't be afraid, pray. Okay. So that night, nothing. The following night, it's like, it, it was always doorway, middle room, bed. So I guess it was starting all over again. She was, and I said she, because I felt like it was a female spirit. I felt that she was in the room. So what I did was before I tried to move, I started to pray. I just closed my eyes. I looked, I saw it, I closed my eyes and I started to pray. And the moment I was done, brother. Fear was gone. My arms flew up. And I was praying audibly, but nothing was coming out. And the moment, the only thing that came out was the name Jesus. Wow. And I came completely free. And at that point, I'm like a lion. Lord's filling me. Yeah. And I walked up to it and I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. It disappeared and I never saw it again. Wow. My dad though, and I found this out in my adult life. My dad, I think two, maybe three weeks after that instance, my dad was kind of making fun of me because you know, they thought he thought, oh, he's just a scared boy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It showed up to him. Wow. <laughs> but I never saw it again, bro. Never saw it again. And what brought back memories, I was watching. 10 years back, there was a movie. I, I want to I wanna try to remember the name. Where there, it's, you know, one of those scary movies where the, pa and the pastor's trying to exercise some child and he's in the church and he falls and he sees this cloaked figure that's a lady that's blue skin. 
I forgot what movie it was, brother. That brought back all those memories. I was like, oh my God, that looks exactly like what I've seen. Wow. So yeah, brother, I don't know if it was succubus or whatever. All I know is it was a demon. Mm -hmm. And she was tormenting me. And I know she was tormenting me to weaken me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's my story on that. And that lasted almost a month, three weeks. That's insane. Yeah. That's scary though, especially as a young child. I mean, it's a, but it goes. And nobody into- believed me. Nobody believed me for two solid weeks. No. Nobody believed me. You know, and that's that I've heard multiple stories of children because they're so susceptible to, and it's good that, and I know your mom, uh, I love your mom, and it's good that she is a uh, fierce, you know, mm-hmm. prayer warrior that she is, um, because, you know, it, it does go to show a few things about your scenario. Number one, culture can influence whether or, or whether or not demonic activity is allowed into your life. Um, you know, without your, your mother's Christian culture, um, you know, had that not been there as a young child, you might not have had access to your grandmother telling you, Hey, this is what you need to do. These are the things that this, this priest stuff might not have came into play. And you could have been, let's say this was, uh, a demon. You could have been, um, enticed to follow it at a young age and I think it's important to note that you know where you grow up even in America um, and and around the world that plays a part of whether Mm -hmm. or not you're susceptible to uh, these different demonic experiences and so it's a blessing that you know you had the mother and and the family lineage that you did because had you not just like many other children swayed at young ages, you could have been one as well that was taken off into this riff of of demonic activity uh, just based off of of not having the knowledge to know what Mm -hmm. to do, um, to allowing these things into your room. Because once again, you're a child. Nobody's going to believe you. That happens all the time. People don't believe you. why if they if they don't believe you then you're why not just continue into it why not continue to be more rebellious and and i'll show them the real this this real figure or whatever it is um you know i've asked parents sometimes i've actually had this happen i've had parents call me or talk with my wife about something that their son or daughter uh is describing you know and Mm -hmm. so or that they keep seeing or that they keep you know or they'll wake up and they'll say oh such and such came last night or something like that something random um and so i'll always ask them to draw it you know ask the child to draw what they see and put a put an image together with that child and then explain to them that this is nothing to be afraid of that this is you know next time you know same type of thing next time you know ask it its name or you know tell it who jesus is and things like that and and especially when you're talking to a six-year-old you know i'm talking like young 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 you know and you're and you know because one of the things that i see throughout scripture and and a lot of people that deal with demonology would would agree with something like this is uh, is that the demon loses its power when its name is provoked or when its name is known. And you see this in Jesus's uh, rebuking of Legion when he kept asking what is his name? And he said Legion, and then he casts him out. Um, And one of the things that, you know, I've always encountered when demonic activity is, or something like that is they always ask the demon its name. They're always trying to figure out its name. So that's one of the things that they'll even say, uh, you know, with with little children, it's an easier conversation of, you know, what is your name? And even in that moment, that can make a demon fearful because the power sometimes is, and once again, this is not something I'm stating as factual, but this is just what demonology, some people would believe that the power is in the name, the same way we think the power is in the name of Jesus. Um, Mm -hmm. that there's power in that name and so with these with these demons uh with it's more susceptible for them to attack children to attack young people uh that are or excuse me it's more apt i would say that are more susceptible to allowing them into their life to control areas of their lives um Mm -hmm. versus an older person where they come in especially as a christian and we recognize things aren't right, even if you don't, you don't have to know if it's a demon or not, but you still know 
spirit recognize spirit this is not right you know mm -hmm. they're going to be the demons more likely to be oppressive right so Correct. who would you choose you know would you choose the older one that, uh, that you can oppress or would you get one that you can possess no the easier one yeah and it, and it makes sense to go after after children i think that leads us into just another thing of of covering our children and, and making children and, and i don't have children but making children aware of without fear though without you don't have to go talk to your four-year-old mm -hmm. about demons like you know no. if something comes up then have the conversation but don't go have the conversation you know prior. it's like you know prior don't and, open and, pandora's box before that's right yeah you know what i'm saying let it like, break you know, open and let it come let up. it break yeah like if yeah. something happens yeah because maybe your six-year-old might not ever deal with a demon but because you said something you know then they might be freaked out for the rest of their life so um but when things come up once again let scripture be our guide sit down have that conversation with with your child or your teenager or whatever and i would advise all parents not to be completely closed off to whatever no. it is they're saying um and it take may it seriously. sound yeah it may sound crazy and it may sound insane but take it seriously but take it scripturally and you can discern within the scriptures whether or not your child is making some crazy elaborate thing up um, or if there's really something spiritual happening in your home. And so I think that that's also important to note that within this, with this young society, within the, within the young society, excuse me, um, the enemy will try to attack. He already is through, through different things. Like you said, TikTok and different influences through social media streams and different influencers and things and like that. And you see it a lot too. Even with youngins, little kids, who are you talking to? Oh, my imaginary friend. I'm like, yeah, it's, and it's, it's very open. They're, they're very open to the concept. So when you have that, I think it's important for parents also to, you know, be open to those conversations and, and catch up on your knowledge of, of what that looks like. Um, because and, and and i and once again we're not having this conversation to scare people um that there's a demon in your house or that there's a demon following you there might not be one like that yeah that's the reality like it and you know the what the sickness that you're dealing with you might just be sick you know it's you know there's probably you know but i think the the big picture of this entire conversation is just wrapped around the idea and it needs to be that there is a there's 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 a spiritual world there is another world, another realm that we do not see and that is alive and active and wait, raging war against the souls of humanity. And then there is one that is fighting for the souls of humanity. Um, and I think that it's important just to recognize in your daily walk that, hey, this is real. This is happening. And because of that, I need to be prayed up. I need to be asking God to be with me today. I need to, it's easy for us to remember or, or to forget uh, for God to inhabit our, uh, or for, for, yeah, to, for God to dwell among us today, like to right. ask him to, right? Now, God's not an invasive God. God's everywhere all the time, obviously, but he's not an invasive God as in he's going to let you choose. So if you invite him into your day, then he will be a part of your day. But if you reject him from your day, he's not going to just push himself into your day, right? Like, yeah, um, no, you, you got to come to him. That's what love times, is. There may be times that he does, but the majority of time, probably not. Uh, and so it, it's, it's, you know, with the, in the same way with this, I don't, I don't even remember what we were saying now. I've just lost my, somebody called me, boom, lost train of thought. Like, <laughs> that, that at the end of the oh, day. at the end of the day. That's right. At the end of the day, there is a spiritual battle. There is something going on that we can't see. And, and, it, and we do need to invite God in. We do need to invite him in every single day. We do, need, we do need to recognize that we aren't capable of fighting this battle. Like no. We are not capable of doing it alone or uh, 
you know, at all, really, we're not capable at all of, of fighting them out. And that's where Christ comes in. Yes, there are physical battles that we can help um, uh, uh, fight, and, and even we can fight in ourselves. Um, you know, addiction is one prime example. We have a choice to fight that every day. Jesus may be battling in the spiritual realm, but we got to battle in the physical. Um, Correct. And, but in other areas of our life, things that are just outside of our control, completely untangible to us. We have got to invite Christ in on a daily basis um, to protect us from those moments, which are intrusive thought, which are depressions, which are anxieties, which are uh, the devil just having his way with our mind that day. Um, and we, once again, going back to manip mental manipulation, it doesn't have to be through witchcraft, sorcery, magic, and things like that. It can just be simply through a thought that he places mm -hmm. in your mind that day. And so it's asking God every single day to come in and protect your, your mind, protect your body, and to walk walk with you and to protect you because there is a spiritual realm that does not want you to succeed today at it all does not want you to win today and it and it wants you to feel like you lost today at the end of the day it wants you to feel like you lost and it, because we know we have the victory we know the battle's won so the only thing the enemy can do is slow us up and all he can do is make us feel bad about our sin or make us feel guilty about the things that we've done or things in our life or whatever. And he can throw these thoughts and throw these things. And all he can do is make us feel like we lost so that we get off the field just for a mm -hmm. little while. Right. Because we know that we're eventually going to get back up and we get back on the game and we jump back in the field and we realize it's not even over yet. Right. Like we're, we're, we're still in this daily, this daily battle, but it's that moment that the devil wants us off the field just for Amen. a little while to make us think that we've lost just for a little while, just to feel bad, just for a little while. And I think it's important for us every single day to recognize that no matter what happens, regardless, no matter the, the, the spiritual warfare going on around us, no matter what you fall to, no matter what you give into, no matter what comes into your life, what leaves your life, it, it, at the end of the day, the victory is already won in Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's already won. You don't have to feel bad today. You don't have to let the devil ruin, ruin today, rule your life today. You don't have to let him uh, live. And now we're human. We have moments of flesh where we, we get down, we, whatever. But at the end of the day, you don't have to let that happen because Jesus is willing to fight those battles for you. But are you willing to call him into them? Are you willing Correct. to ask him? Are you willing to say, hey, I want you to walk with me today? It's true. Very true. It's all about how you want it, believe it or not, because the Lord is, you know, the Lord is, doesn't intervene just to intervene. You have to be willing to accept him. And that's why, that's why it jumps back to the black and white picture. I told you either you're with him willingly. And if you're not willingly, then you're not. And you're willingly against him too. Correct. You're either with him or not. One of the things that's lost in our art of preaching today is uh, the fact that we are natural born enemies of God. I think, we forget, I think we forget that, that the Bible says that you were once an enemy, like you were God's enemy, but because of Christ, he has called you in to, so no longer are you foreigners in this land. This is in Ephesians. And, and no longer are you foreigners in this land, but now you are, are one, Christ being the cornerstone. But there were time, there was a time that all of us born into sin was an enemy of God's. And I think that we forget that, that, you know, we have these, these messages out there where, you know, God is your friend. And Yes, I believe that God is your father. He is your friend. He is your consoler. He is your redeemer. He is your counselor. God is everything. everything. But you have to be in Christ for that to be real. And that's what we're, we missed that message today that yes, God loves you, but yes, you're an enemy of his right now. Mm -hmm. You're not on his team. And if you're not with him, you're against him. And, and that's the reality of it, is there's no middle ground, well, I'm just indifferent. Well, according to the Bible, there's no indifference. There's either you're with him or you're against him. Or you're him. not. And that's it. And, and so at the end of the day, it's what side are you on when it comes to, to God? Because there is no 
middle ground. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you don't that you live a perfect life and everything's great and all. It, it just means that every single day I'm I'm on God's side. I understand that I am choosing to try to my today to live my best life for him, regardless of what's going on around me in the spiritual or what's happening. I'm gonna live my best life today for God. Or Amen. the other side, and this is what we don't like to talk about, I'm not. And if I choose not, then that means I'm living for the enemy. It's that that whole thing where they say, you know, to not or to choose not to answer is to answer type deal. Um, it's kind of one of those things like to choose not to follow God or to choose not. Yeah, to, to choose not to follow Jesus. And Satan is to choose to follow Satan and not Jesus right? Like it's, it's, there's no middle ground there. Like it's, and, and I think that's what we're, we're missing in, in today's society to, and not to, once again, to demonize people or to scare the hell out of them. Um, but the reality that even in the church, we have a lot of lost people still sitting in, in chairs that are being plagued by uh, demonic oppression and things like that, because they don't know the truth of the mm-hmm. gospels. They don't know the realities and the powers that we have in Jesus because they don't realize that they're still an enemy of God because all they've been told is they're a friend of God and they don't have to do anything. And, and that God is just, you know, love and that, and, and all these things are true, but they're not whole truth that yes, all this is true, but there is an exchange for that. And Jesus paid it. He paid, Mm -hmm. he paid the price for that. And all you have to do is accept that by accepting that you are accepting to live a life like Christ. And because of that, Christ will come and he'll live in and through you. But we have a lot of people still sitting in our churches that don't recognize that you are an enemy of God, which means you're playing on the devil's team Mm -hmm. and God cannot be happy with the devil's team. No. And he can never let the devil's players on his you know into his courts if you will like without being on his team and i I think that's what we like you said there's no middle ground it's black and white it's Mm -hmm. either you're with them or you're not and and that's the reality you're you're with christ or you're against christ and we don't want to think of it that way because we don't want to give the ultimatum of of black or white it's either well what about the middle ground what about well, there is, you know, in, in our religion, in our faith, and this is what I tell people is in, in my faith, and this may sound harsh to you, but in my faith, there is no middle ground. There is either we're with God or we're not with God. Now, that's, in other faiths, that's on them. Yeah, and that's, and believe it or not, the world has catered so much to that middle ground, the participation trophy, this, that, yeah. and I got nothing against it. I'm just saying. We're so conditioned to looking at a middle ground. There is yeah. no middle ground. This is a war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pick a side. Yep. Yeah. And that's you the, know, that that's the hard part is that there is no middle ground. And with a lot of things in life, there is a middle ground. But when it then, comes to God, there's not. <laughs> no, there's not. And in today's society, like I told you, McDonald's offering tarot readings. Really? It's crazy. That stunned me. I looked That's at it. I said, yeah. no, nah, it can't be true. And I typed it in and it's everywhere, everywhere. May 10th through June 2nd, the Mercury retrograde. Oh, man. And, and I, I look at that and the first thing that comes in my mind and you see it so much with like, you know, TikToks with manipulation. Oh, tell your girl this. And this is what you say to contrast this. Oh, so yeah, that yeah. Way you, and you look at all that and you're like, dude, babies playing with powers that they should not. Mm. And what are you doing? You're or- opening the mind. You're opening mm-hmm. yourself up to a whole different realm mm-hmm. that you don't want to be a part of. Yeah. And the devil always entice with victories and feeling good. Like you said, the witch doctor, mm-hmm. you're going to feel empowered. Oh, look, I can do this and I can do that. And I can tell you, look, at the end of the day, any power that's not given to you by our Lord and Savior mm-hmm. is not one that you want. Mm-hmm. and it's and it's never true it may start off as something small like oh the dead body told me this pen is gonna fly across my room yeah. okay and it flies yeah. across okay yeah. no problem but then what is it gonna tell you afterwards mm-hmm. and once you've opened that door what are you gonna endure afterwards 
their job is to oppress, torment, and destroy you. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to be enticing. It's just like the, you know, the pedophile, the, the images back in the 80s, they had like a cartoon that they would show like in schools where this uh, old guy would show up. Oh, you want some candy? And then all of a sudden, you <laughs> snatch the kid. It's the same concept. <laughs> Yeah. The devil's going to sit there and say, That's true, oh, yeah. you want some candy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to give you those winning lottery yeah. numbers for tonight. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. And next thing you know, you're trapped. And what yeah. do you lose? What, what have you gained after what you lost? Nothing. And what is it, even Jesus says, what is it to gain the whole world but lose your soul? Um, and that's kind of what the offer is. At the end of the day, I mean, any any offer that any magic sorcery voodoo astrology anything that it can offer us is nothing that is eternal the it's only all thing lie. yeah it's all a lie and, and that's what it's saying that nothing that lasts forever nothing that's eternal it's all fleeting so the only one that can offer anything eternal is christ is Amen. you know through christ we have eternal life but all these other things that we go to and that we you know or, or even, you know, young people will go to or older people will go to. It doesn't really matter, just in general. Um, all of those things, all those things that we listed earlier, sorcery and astrology and all that stuff, it just, it doesn't get you anywhere. It gets you to needing more versus being fulfilled, like we talked about earlier. And none of it is eternal. None of the fulfillment, none of the stuff that you get out of it is eternal. Like you said, it's a, it's a little thing that the devil's like, okay, we'll take a step further, take a step further, take a step further. It's always going to be a step further until you're eventually just completely his and you know it's but it's still always a step further whereas in christ it's once i take that step i'm done i'm filled mm -hmm. i'm covered i'm done it, it's not a, it's not another step it's not okay one more all right keep coming no. but with the devil it's always one more thing go back to the garden it was hey did god really say that hey take this fruit hey follow me let's go run and hide god doesn't love you anymore Hey, by the way, it was their fault. You know, it's it's a constant one step after another. It's it's hey, one more thing, one more thing. Oh, by the way, one it's thing, a lure. Right, cover up. Oh, one more thing. You need to cover up. Oh, why? Because God's shameful. Oh, we need to go behind the trees. Why? Because I mean, at the end of the day, when he found Adam and Eve, he found the serpent too. The devil mm -hmm. was still with them. Like so, they were still listening to the wrong person. So, how easy is it for us to get so sucked in that all the only voice we know how to listen to is the wrong one? Yeah. We don't even know the voice of truth because we've listened to such lies throughout our lives that, you know, whatever it may be, or we've tapped into such spirits that have taught us or told us or said things. And now, and it could be as small as just a, is, as something as a, a spirit uh, of envy or something like that, that has that has come over your life to where it has dominated you from a child to where you're always envious of the next person, or you always mm -hmm. want what they have. You know, it can be something as small as that, that we don't recognize as, as areas of our life that we've allowed something in. It may not still be there, but it hit something within us that is an area that we have to reflect on and look back at and then remove. I, I use sexual, uh, um abuse as an example um a sexual paper. abuse a, a sexual abuse victim is not still being victimized but they're still hurting from it yeah same thing with a demonic encounter or a demonic it doesn't mean the demon's still there but it definitely means you're still hurting from it and see i think that there's a lot of things that we as young before christ and this is something that that christians also don't do um, we don't self-evaluate the demonic encounters that we may have had before we come to christ that still have impact on our life after christ they still mm -hmm. have a stronghold they still have a place it doesn't mean the demon's still there it doesn't mean the molester's still molesting you but it does mean that you have something that has happened to you that you've got to go back to that spot and you've Incorrect. got to wade through that trash and you've got to forgive yourself, remove the shame, remove the guilt, allow Jesus into that place right there into that moment. Well, here's the, the thing. I attribute this to, to, to that area of sexual molestation because that's how this stuff, it can feel this way to us. Like it's still there. It's still like, you know, or just because it's like 
if I, if I recognize that this brought pain on me, then I am bringing the shame back, but that's not true. And it doesn't mean that there's a demon still on your life or that this is still there. You're not some, that you're not a good enough person or you're not a good enough Christian or whatever it may be. But there are things that has happened to all of us um, that doesn't mean they're still happening. It doesn't mean the demon's still in our life, but it definitely had an impact that we've got to go back and correct. So I think even as Christians, it is important for us to go back and evaluate our life pre-Christ. What are things you open yourself up to? What are things that happen to you? What are demonic influences that are still trying to control you? Uh, we meet Christians all the time with, with all arrays of issues. We all have issues, right? Um, yeah. But which issue attached to you and why? And how can we go back to that moment when it did and wade through that trash and that garbage and figure out what the devil did to put his thumbprint on you to where you always feel this way or think that way or, or have this response or have this reaction um, and you blame it on whatever it may be. But in reality, it was a moment, an encounter with spiritual darkness that you don't realize or something that happened that was a spiritual attack that maybe you didn't know in the moment but it's less left an everlasting impact on you. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes. Yes. I think it's really so just soul searching, just taking an inventory of your, your, your mind and, and your body and your personality and who you are. That's your soul. And, and what, what's been affected in your soul by the, the, the avenue of the flesh. We talked about this last time about the, the you know, but it, the, the avenue of the flesh, what's affected the soul. And now through the avenue of the spirit, let's get in there and let's dig that stuff out and let's push it back. Liberate and yourself. Be, yeah. And let's, yeah. Let's be free from that. And, and let's be free from the sorcery and from the demonic. And that's where I say there are people today living still in bondage as Christians. They're living in a, in a small bondage because they don't believe that there uh, is a darkness on them or over them, or that maybe they've never really encountered something like me and you have encountered where we're like, yes, we know, we believe. And, and they just dismiss whatever they're, whatever is inside of them as a part of their personality. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, this is just my person. That, no, that's not. There's something that's made you that way because your soul was created by God and your personality that is made by God is something that God is, is, is his image through you and his image through you is not going to be distorted. So whatever it is that you are claiming to be a part of your just oh, as part of my personality, that's not that's not reality. That's some influence has, has caused that. Once again, mental manipulation has, has, has caused this in your life to make you believe this. And, and those are even areas, once again, that I say we've got to go back to as Christians because we're living in bondage, myself included. I'm not excluded from the conversation. There are things that I'm personally right now, even going back through with my counselors and with my, with my pastors of things that I'm dealing with or why I deal with certain things. And I can look back and tell you that this was, there are certain things throughout my life that I can look back on and definitely tell you this was the enemy trying to distract me, lure me away or do something uh, in, in my life. And it has left an everlasting impact. And not to say that it's going to still be there. Uh, the impact may be everlasting, but it doesn't mean ever painful, right? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean ever, you know, ever guilt ridden or anything like that. Like, yeah, it, it, it happened. You can't take those things away, but with Christ, you can change the trajectory of your feelings and your emotions towards what took place versus yeah. allowing them to dominate your life. And I think that's a process that every Christian needs to go through. Mm. You know, you need to reflect back on your life and, and see what affected you, how did it affect you, why it affected you. Yeah. Because some things are flesh. We make mistakes all the time in the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't attribute everything to the demonic. There is yeah. our own mistakes as well. And, uh, desires or envy or this mm -hmm. or that. You know, it's just taking that time and, and then bringing it up to the Lord. It's already mm -hmm. been forgiven, but bringing it up to him so he can free you of that chain, mm -hmm. cutting that mm -hmm. chain per se. Yes. Yeah, absolutely.